What's up everybody, I'm Bob, and in this video we're going to get right into creating an Ubuntu virtual machine using VMware Workstation Player. Keep in mind with this particular hands-on activity, you can use VirtualBox or any other hypervisor technology, but I'm going to show VMware because VMware is an industry standard and it's, it's a good thing to know it. First of all, what is VMware? How do I get it? What's VirtualBox? How do I get it? Both are free. You can go to any search engine you want, type in VMware Workstation Player, and then what you will notice as you scroll down, you can download VMware Workstation Player on your computer. You'll see the download start. I'm not going to go through the install of that just because I've already got it on my computer. But for you, if you don't, you're going to want to let that download finish and then just run through the install process. There's nothing special there. The computer might have to reboot. As you type next, next, and install, at some point, VMware, I believe, will require you to reboot. VirtualBox, also, you can go out and Google VirtualBox or you can look up virtualbox.org right in the URL and it should take you here. Whether you're on Linux, Mac, or Windows, VirtualBox should have a version of VirtualBox for you. One more thing about VMware here. VMware does not have a workstation player that's free for Mac. You have to get what's called VMware Fusion. That is a paid software, but just keep that in mind. Once you have the software, I'm going to use VMware. Once you have VMware, it looks like this. You open it up and it will not have anything in the list. So you see up here where my mouse is, all these different virtual machines. These are things I've already set up for different learning activities, different classes I need to take. And, and so you're going to just see a blank space there because you haven't set a VM up yet. Now, that's what we're going to do next. Yours will default to home and you'll see these options here. We're going to create a new virtual machine. That is exactly what it sounds like. You're creating this new environment. You're, de you're defining how much storage space, how much RAM, how many CPU cores that your Ubuntu VM is going to use. Now before you can even do that, we're going to need to get the Ubuntu ISO. What is an ISO file? It's a disk image file that can be used to burn an image of an operating system to a CD or write it to a drive to make a USB drive bootable. But in this case, all we need to do is get the ISO file for VMware. So you're going to go and look up Ubuntu, U-B-U-N-T-U. You can get Ubuntu Desktop and then go ahead and download Ubuntu desktop. So right here above me, you see hit download there, wait for that to download and then go point to that ISO file as they call it. Just make sure you've got it. And when we go through, I'll show you why you need that ISO. When we go through the create a new virtual machine option, it's one of the first things it asks us for is an ISO file. So you're gonna click on this option here in the middle that says in, what's your installer disk image file and then you're going to want to browse to it notice mine defaulted to where i keep my ubuntu file i've done this before so my vmware installs remembering some of this stuff i keep all my isos i download in a folder i call isos or isos Sometimes I leave it in a directory called or a folder called environments. For you, it's going to probably be in download. You'll want to hit browse and use File Explorer to get to downloads and then just double click that Ubuntu ISO. We're going to then hit next here and just give it a name. I'm just going to do a fun name, Jim Flip Flop, and just J Flip Flop or just, just Flip Flop. And we're going to do a password next it's going to ask you to give it a virtual machine name you can leave the defaults or you could give it a name based on what you're going to be using it for that's often how i'll name vms sometimes i'll just leave it the default sometimes i'll call it web server test vm or whatever i'm using it for it'll help kind of organize things either way you can leave it 
Notice this space. What do you think this particular setting is for? Let me know. Put in the comments. This is for your storage space. That means how much of your hard drive is going to be taken up or reserved to create what is called a virtual hard disk. You want to make note of where the virtual hard disk is because that's where all the data and the operating system gets in installed to or the data gets saved to it. The operating system gets installed to it. This is really important because you can move virtual machines around to different computers. You can copy them. You can store them online and download them. And as long as whoever's downloading them has VMware, they can run that. But the main reason I wanted to really touch on this particular part was because you need to keep in mind that whatever amount of space you give it, your hard drive of your computer has to have that much space. Most computers have it, you know, well over 20 gigabytes, so that's just fine. Keep in mind in this situation, if you're trying to give it like 200 or 300 or a lot of storage space, that you should plan for that with your hard drive. In Windows, to find some of this out, you can type system information. You can go to File Explorer and scroll down, and, and, and it'll tell you how much storage space you've got. It'll tell you how much RAM you have. Let me show you another way. When I open up File Explorer, if I were to go to this PC right here, this C drive, you'll see shows how much storage I have available. You know, and I have another hard drive installed in my computer, so I have even more storage. that I, I've started to move things over to that. So if you have multiple hard drives, you'll see them here, but know that um, you want in Windows you want to definitely make sure you check this in Mac there's ways to check it as well um, in Linux of course so just make note of that it won't let you pick a storage capacity above how much your underlying hardware has so hit next and then this is going to just give you a summary of all the resources you've allocated to it I'm going to hit customize hardware just to show you the different options. Notice you've got memory, that's RAM. Four gigabytes of RAM should be just fine. Remember there's 1,024 megabytes in a gigabyte. And that is how VMware measures, you know, gigabytes, you know, or at least measures how much RAM you give it. You could type in the megabyte number or you could drag this arrow to the, to the amount of space you want to give it or the amount of RAM. Again, the same as with the storage space, you want to make sure that this is not exceeding how much your computer has. And you really want to keep it well below because keep in mind when using VMware or VirtualBox, you have to account for the fact that your computer, your host computer, which is the original system you're booting into and logging into, is also using up RAM on your computer. So this virtual machine is also going to use up RAM, which means that they're both using RAM and it's going to take up more of your resources at that single point in time, especially when the virtual machine is running. So you also notice this with processors. If you have a decent CPU, you're going to have a lot of cores. Another way to see how many processor cores do I have, you can go into system information. I know there's a lot of places you can look in Windows to find out how many cores you have. I think Task Manager will tell you. Mac OS will let you know as well if you go to About and look at the system information. Linux, there's ways too. If you want to know all the ways, just open up Google and search how to find out how many CPU cores my computer has and say Windows or Mac or Linux. We've got it selected. When we selected that ISO file, if I were to think about what we're doing, if we were to compare it to what that looks like in real life, technically what that would meant is that we picked up a CD and we plugged it into a CD drive, if you've ever heard one of those, of what one of those are. Or we burned that image to a USB drive and we plugged it physically into the computer. But since this is a virtual computer, it's all files, so we're pointing to the image file. Network adapter settings are, NAT, are set to NAT mode. We'll talk about that later in a future video. Just know that it has networking too. It has all the components of a physical computer, but it's virtual. So we're going to close out of that. We're going to hit finish. 
and it is going to automatically start up this hit OK. It's going to automatically start up this setup. It's booting a computer. You're going to see the VMware screen come up. It's, that's like a BIOS. You know, if you boot up a Dell computer, you see Dell or HP, you see HP. Then it's going to boot off that ISO file and load Ubuntu system files into RAM so that we can start the process of setting up Ubuntu and doing the install. Now I'll get to the point where we start the install of Ubuntu and then we'll be done. Congratulations, you have set up your first VM at this point. If nothing goes wrong, you do at this point, you probably want to, let me pull it up. You probably want to watch your task manager. So you see me, I've got task manager open here. You want to see, okay, how much RAM is it taking up right now? Is it, is it hogging all, like most of my RAM? I might want to give it less RAM. I might want to give it less CPU cores. Or you might have a good bit of resources. And let's say you're looking at the performance section of task manager. If you're in Windows and you see, oh man, it's using almost all of my CPU, give it less. Or if you're like, oh man, I've got a lot of CPU percentage left. Maybe I need to give it more cores. That'll give the VM more performance, right? It needs more RAM or what have you. It's a good mixture there. That was the Ubuntu sound. So as this loads up, there's a Ubuntu screen we'll get. We'll see the background. You may have to wait a little bit for the GUI to load. And then you'll see the install menu come up. You're going to just pick your language, continue through that, start the install. So I'll leave this up to you whether you want to do download updates while installing Ubuntu or not. I usually keep it checked just to make sure I'm all good and up to date. Hit continue. Give it a moment to load. So it continues right behind me. And then, so when you see this right here, it says erase disk and install Ubuntu. Don't freak out. It might feel like, especially if this is your first time, it might feel like you are about to break something, but you're not. You Remember what the disk is or the hard drive, the storage space is what you picked originally. You saw mine was 20 gigabytes of storage. Yours might have been whatever you gave it. It's just going to erase that allocation of the hard drive. It's not removing any of your data. It's not messing up your computer. It's talking about the virtual hard drive, the part of the, the hard drive that Ubuntu sees. So hit install now. And it's going to go through this install process. We're going to say, yes, we're sure we want to make those changes. And this part is really just a waiting game. They give you a few options like your time zone. You'll want to make sure to set that. Yeah, they'll give you options like your name, whatever you want to name it. You can do that, right? I'll call mine Bob and then just give it a password. Oh, I must have caps lock there and then continue. And that's a waiting game. The last thing I'm going to show you before the end of this video is where this all was just created. This was all just set up in documents and virtual machines. VMware likes to it likes to put um, the VMs in here. Oh, that's not. I clicked the wrong thing. So right here, you'll see the Ubuntu VM. Double click in there. This is not done yet since it's doing the install, but just know. This is where all the files are. The actual hard drive file is the, you know, the virtual disk file. And what you're going to do and, and want to consider is, let's say you get a completely new computer and you have done a lot of stuff in that VM. You know, let's say this Ubuntu VM is something you want to use as a daily computer you're using and you just want to get familiar with Linux, which I recommend. They say one of the best ways to learn a new language is to go live in that country. The same is true with technology. So if you want to learn Mac OS or you want to learn Linux or Windows, whatever it is, you want to use that every day. Ubuntu is going to be, you know, let's say we did that. We had a bunch of data on there and we were getting a new computer. You would want to copy this Ubuntu folder onto a flash drive or a network share 
And then once you set up that new computer, you install VMware or VirtualBox, whichever you're using. You would drag that folder onto that new computer or transfer it on there and just go in through VMware and, and you would type, instead of creating a new VM, you would open a virtual machine and then you would navigate to the file you transferred over with all those files or all those, you know, that virtual disk files in it. This has been setting up an Ubuntu virtual machine. If you have any questions, leave comments. I hope this has helped you. Thank you for watching it and keep learning.